Future time travelers, and welcome to this very special edition of Idle Chatter Podcast and the Flux Capacicast joined together. And with me, I have one of the co-hosts from the Flux Capacicast, Guy Hutchinson. Welcome, Guy. Hello, Andrew. Always good to talk to you. Hey, it always is definitely good to talk to you, but how do we join these names together to make a nice little mesh of Idle Chatter and Flux <laughs> Capacicast? What do we do with yeah. that? Yeah, Flux Chatter, I guess. Would flux probably be Chatter. The, th- that's the one that makes sense. The other way, it's just gobbledygook, but yeah. Well, I had a guy call my show Idle Chatter thinking it was funny, so we could do something with the Idle Chatter giving you uh, acid reflux. How about that? Very nice. Flux cheddar. All right, we are here for a very special reason, and it's not just because I wanted to chat with Guy. I really enjoy that, but uh, we have a great guest tonight, and you will know this young man from the Telltale video game Back to the Future. He is AJ Locasio. Welcome, AJ. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> and if you probably... I, I, I didn't say this already, but AJ, you got to play Marty McFly. How cool is that? Yeah, I'm still coping with it. It's weird. It's very, very weird. It's very, very cool, and I still don't believe it. So, uh, yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because I I was just kind of going through and thinking, there's going to be a Back to the Future video game. How cool is that? But I really wasn't a Telltale follower yet. I hadn't played any of their games. I had only heard the name around. And so when I saw it, I thought, oh, cool, a Back to the Future game. And then I'm like, oh, it's point and click. Bummer. Which was which was totally wrong of me because Back to the Future introduced me to their their world of point and click games, which led me yeah. to their other games. I'm like, wow, I actually really like these games, and I never thought that I would. So uh, I attribute the Back to the Future license and uh, you and the great Christopher Lloyd's voices to getting me there. So if there's one thing you've done in your life, AJ, it's helped to make me like Telltale Games. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them that. Uh, yeah, no, no problem, man. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, but... that's so funny. I, you know, I didn't know how to react either when I first heard there was, you know, about the game. I was like, point and click, like Carmen, like Carmen San Diego was yeah. sort of what I knew as a kid. So I was like, oh, weird. Like I couldn't quite wrap my head around it. But once, you know, I played it, I was like, okay, that, I, I get it. This makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. They've yep. they've really changed, you know. Telltale Games did a very good job of updating the format because the the older ones, you know, used to be very tedious. And this one, I thought, you know, everything about it, it felt like it was moving the whole time. Yeah, yeah. A little more action based because you could actually move the character from place to place, and you know, the, the choices you made actually made sense in context, which is, you know, it's great. It's less like a choose your own adventure book and more like an actual video game, which which helps it quite a bit. But uh, AJ. Do you mind my asking? <laughs> Do you mind my asking your age? Uh, I how old am I? I'm going to be 27 on Friday. Okay, so you're you're very close to. I'm 30. So uh, where's your introduction to Back to the Future and these you know this this trilogy of awesome films? Uh, I don't I don't know. I don't honestly remember ever not knowing Back to the Future. It's like Indiana Jones and Back to the Future were sort of the movies that had always existed. Like I remember, I, like I remember seeing Hook for the first time. I remember seeing Star Wars for the first time. Like I, that was like a thing. But Back to the Future and and specifically Indiana Jones were just always there. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's sort of uh, it's probably my father's fault because he's a huge movie junkie. Um, he probably forced me to watch him, and then uh, and then they just sort of became a part of the the fabric of my everyday existence. But uh, but yeah, I don't really remember when it started. It just has always been. The funny thing about Back to the Future is it's a family movie. You say you watched it, you know, like with your dad, but it's it's a family movie with a whole lot of swear words in it. Yeah, I don't think it mattered as much back then. Like <laughs> yeah. late 80s, early 90s, like, I mean, my parents, they cursed so much. Like we weren't allowed to curse, but they cursed <laughs> constantly. So like to us, it didn't matter. My dad would like put on porkies and then he'd be like, and then he'd like cover our eyes at certain parts. And it, it didn't really, yeah. I don't know. 
<laughs> I have my yeah. boss at work actually is uh, she told a story. She loves Back to the Future as well. But I was telling her just about how much I love Back to the Future. And she goes, you know, I chose that movie to show to my uh, church youth group. And my dad was the pastor of the church. And I guess she had the youth group over at her house and played the movie. And it got to the, I guess there was all, you know, all the dams and all the things you say in there. When it got to Marty's Jesus Christ, Doc. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus <laughs> My Christ, God. Doc, they, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was like, I guess she had to, to personally, publicly apologize to the congregation <laughs> for making them watch Back to the Future. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's such a funny, th- it's funny that seems like such an innocuous thing to me. I would never think like, oh, yeah. In a church, that probably doesn't play. Right. <laughs> you know what's funny about it though is that it's such an it's such an innocent story in nature that I think if you look at the intention <laughs> well, alone, well, let's not go into the that. whole. He's trying to he's taking his mom to the prom and then then he's going to make out with her until his dad come and punch him out. And, and guy, we've and, we've and, been and down and this Biff road. Biff is a rapist. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. But the you got to look at the intentions though. The intentions are just to get everything back in order. You know. So that's yeah, good. He, he he might have had to do a lot worse just to make his own existence uh, happen again. So he, he got off pretty easy, really, if you think about it. So it's true. That's true. The only it's thing that changed to murder anyone. <laughs> hey, AJ, walk us through your your time from childhood until you become uh, the voice of Marty McFly for this game. What's the journey that you take? Is this you know? Did you always want to be a voice actor? Did you you know? Did you train for it? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Oof, that's a lot of that's yeah. a lot of information. Um, well, start at the beginning. We'll, we'll work beginning. our way there. <laughs> uh, well, I guess uh, you know I get asked that question from time to time, and it's always you know I always have a bit of an existential crisis because I'm like, wait, I I don't know. It's it's very difficult. I don't know where it began. I know my dad uh, was always doing voices, and and uh, we were always kind of imitating things. Like in my house, it was just sort of how we interacted and. Uh, you know, my dad was a big Jerry Lewis fan, so he would always imitate Jerry Lewis. And so I started to pick that up. And then, you know, everything from Back to the Future to, uh, you know, I used to, I, I still am, uh, love Harrison Ford and was obsessed with Raiders of the Lost Ark. And so as a kid, I used to try to imitate uh, Harrison Ford's mannerisms and, and his voice and all that stuff. And same thing with Marty is, as I got older, I was like, man, like, I can't, I can never be Indiana Jones. I can never be Han Solo or any of these people. But like, Marty, that's someone I can be. And um, I kind of, you know, as I was going puberty and all that, like my once my voice started changing, uh, I guess I sort of realized that somewhere along the line, I was like, oh, I kind of sometimes I kind of sound like him. This is weird. And then someone uh, I used to teach, teach gymnastics, not very well, but it was a job. And uh, they uh it, randomly said like oh you sound like Stuart Little or you sound like like they would point out random Michael J Fox characters through their you know filter or whatever he was doing at the time they'd be like you sound like Milo Thatcher and uh, and I was like huh that's interesting so I guess I sort of slowly started to hone that you know in secret it was not something I ever went like hey look at me I could do an impression of you know uh (laughs) but then I guess somewhere in late high school or in the beginning of college someone discovered that I could do it I don't remember how and so it became a thing like, hey, do your impression of Michael J. Fox or Marty McFly. And then it sort of became like, hey, do Chris Walken, do Robin Williams, do Harrison. Like all these random voices would, I don't know, there was like a select few group of people that would sort of things. And I was like, all right, sure. But I'm not, I'm not predispositioned to sort of jump in and be like, let me do an impression of this guy. Like I get kind of uncomfortable doing that. But um, it does, uh, I mean, now I've, I've gotten used to it, but uh it was not something I ever sought out. It just kind of always happened uh, casually, I guess. So um, I don't know. Uh, from from birth to now, I don't really know how to uh, describe the evolution of Marty. That, that makes sense, right? I kind of sure. did it. Sure, <laughs> yeah, why not? Absolutely. I was close. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, did it become kind of a party trick for you to be able to sit down and just stay? Uh, you know, you could gather some people around you by throwing out some Jack Sparrow or some Marty McFly or, or some of the ones that, you know, we've heard you do on, on YouTube and things like that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot. About, it's funny. I forgot about Jack Sparrow, I, even though that was such a huge part of my life. But yeah, um, the Marty thing was definitely like my few friends who knew I could do it would be like, hey, 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 do that Michael J. Fox thing. And people would be like, oh, yeah, it's pretty good. And uh, <laughs> and yeah, same 
you know, for Jack Sparrow was just one of those bizarre, uh, I don't know, it was one of those bizarre moments where I saw the movie and was like, I really like that. And then it sort of settled in and, and uh, I was like, man, it'd be fun to do that for Halloween. And so I just started secretly working on the impression, uh, like in my car and stuff and like making a CD of his lines. And that was the first time I'd ever actually like tried to learn a voice. And um, so and I sort of got hooked into the the musicality of it or the 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 uh, the fun of sort of trying to replicate a sound with your voice and uh the hell was that? It sounded like a small elephant. <laughs> that was my, my three-year-old, and he's down the hall behind two doors from here. Jesus. My three-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. It was just... <laughs> um, three-year-olds are very capable of making noises that you never would have imagined. I, I live my life around them, and guy, you live with one, so... <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. It's... Well, this is actually though a good segue, and, and the reason why I say that is because you're talking a lot about the cadence of the voice, the pitch of the voice, the things that you do. Now, I don't want to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy. Give me a well-known Marty McFly line for the sake of just so we can start a conversation from it. Okay. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? See, it's so amazing. First off, that's fantastic. But Guy and I, the other night, were talking about speaking with you. And mm -hmm. one of the questions the two of us kind of conjured up thinking, gosh, how in the world? Okay, the pressure that goes with playing a character that Michael J. Fox made famous is kind of like Marty is hallowed ground. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> you're stepping into this role, voicing it. And like I've heard you say before, you just want people to believe it's Michael J. Fox that's doing that, which is very easy to do. You are a dead ringer for him. But when you're doing Thanks. the DeLorean line you just did for us, is there more pressure to directly sound like Michael J. Fox in lines he's already done? Or is there more pressure involved with the rest of episode one through the last episode of doing his persona of Marty McFly with all new lines, brand new material? Which is more pressure for you? Uh, oh, that's a weird one. Um, I mean, I do go through this thing in my head when I'm doing, when I'm doing a line from the movie there is sort of like, all right, you got to hit that beat. And remember, he strains here. And there's like this quick, these quick flashes of like muscle memory that are just like, okay, this, 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 this. And then, you know, because the voice itself is kind of like, and I've described this a, a bunch of times where it's like, it's kind of like playing an instrument. Like it's there. And once you sort of had to know, know how to play it in the right keys, you can sort of, you know, you can move it around. Um, but what's more pressure? I mean, it was definitely a hell of a lot of pressure when, you know, when I first brought, got in there, I was an unknown and they were taking a huge chance just, you know, flying me up there and having me uh, even just try it out. It's like, well, that, you know, that was a waste of money and time if I couldn't pull it off. So there was a lot of pressure in the beginning. And uh, it's, it's something I've done my whole life. It's the same thing as when I would do Jack Sparrow. I, I wouldn't do just Jack Sparrow lines. The point of the, you know, the reason I sort of uh, knocked it into my head so hard was because I was like, I have to be able to say anything. And that's the, you yeah. know, I guess that's sort of the essence of voice matching. Um, and that's, it's very, it's a very difficult thing to do because you do have to sort of keep yourself on track and keep yourself uh, within that realm. But I think once you get, uh, it's such a hard thing to describe. Uh, once you sort of get the, the sound down I, it, and it's just in you, it's almost hard to break at that point. Like when we would do the sessions, I, I liked doing them all at once. Like they would schedule out three sessions and I'd be like, can I just do it? Can we just run through the eight hours or whatever now so I can just get it in my head? But then for the next two days, I would have to shake off Marty because I'd get so much more, you know, I'd get so into it. And the same thing with when I do Jack Sparrow is it was hard to get rid of the voice. And uh, so, yeah, it was a lot of pressure. But once you're sort of into it, it just kind of flows, hopefully, if it's something you can do well, I guess. I don't know. It was I'm, – I'm really bad at ending these questions where I'm always just like, <laughs> I don't know. Did I answer it? We're, we're I, I do find that you find people that can do an impression, but they can do the lines everybody knows. But to do – you know, to take that and do something totally different always seems to be a much harder, you know, task to match that sound. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it's definitely hard. I mean, I've, uh, I'm doing some stuff or have done some stuff I can't talk about where it's the same sort of thing where it's like, okay, here's a new voice and not someone that I've grown up with. 
that I don't know very well that I just got an audition where like, hey, can you match this voice? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And they give you a bunch of lines, you match it, and it's like, all right, good, you got it. Now do an animated series ba- or whatever, you know, with this voice. And I'm like, oh, jeez, you know. And it's like <laughs> then you have to go into the, I, you know, I don't have ten years of history or a couple years or several movies. I only have this small thing to work with. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 it, it is very hard, but it. It's hard, but it's not difficult. Like once you get into it, you're into it. But it, but there is a certain, there's an incredible amount of practice and like weird sort of losing your mind over it before you get to the point where you're like, okay, I can now order food in that voice or do you know weird things. Right, right. So when you uh, the the your road to becoming Marty in the game is one that I know you've talked about a million times. But go ahead and and <laughs> get that out there for our audience too, because it is a really cool story. It, it's one of the best Hollywood stories I think I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, the Hollywood story you've never heard. Um, <laughs> it's uh, all right. So all right. Uh, it's funny. I've told the story so many times that even I don't I don't believe it anymore. I'm like, wait, is that really what happened? <laughs> Um, so I heard about the game. I was working at this place in Queens, a therapeutic resource center, editing job or editing videos about like kids with disabilities. And I I was in the back of like a room, like a dark gray room. And it was not a very pleasant job. And, um, I was just going through the internet and, uh, I saw Tall Tales posting like, Hey, Jurassic Park and back to the future of the game. And I was like, whoa, like I lost my mind. I was like texting my friends. I was like, look, there's going to be, that's so cool. Back to the Future and Jurassic Park. And um, it was, I, I, there was like this weird moment of like inspiration. Like I could hear like the diddly diddly. I was, <laughs> you know, I, I was like, huh, I wonder if they're going to get Michael J. Fox. And it just sort of the seed was planted in my head. And, um, you know, I thought about it the whole way. Like I, I got on a bus and went back home to Jersey um, for the night. Jay-Z. And uh, <laughs> as I was, you know, I got in my car and I went to go drive to like a coffee shop or something to go write or hang out with someone. I don't remember what it was. And um, I was talking to my cousin and he was like, you should do it. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you should, you should do it. You should do the voice. And I was like, you, can I, how? And he was like, I, I don't know. I was like, just go do it. And I was like, how? I literally spun my car around, which is not something I'm apt to do. I'm not. I'm pretty terrified of uh, quickly moving vehicles, and um, <laughs> I'm painting myself to be a complete pansy. But anyway, <laughs> um, like I spun my car around and like floored it back home halfway through this drive, and I like sat at my computer and I was like, okay, how the hell do I do this? And I like looked up Telltale Games, and thankfully at the time they were not as well known, so it was very easy to get in contact with them. Um, and they just had, you know, like a laundry list of people you can contact. So I did. I found like the first person on the list, which I believe is Rhoda, the accountant there. And um, like called and left a message saying like, hey, my name is Angelo Cassio. You know, I do, you know, a Marty McFly impression. It's my density to be in this game. You know, I was just like, well, I don't have a shot at this. So I might as well just be as fanny and stupid and like go against every rule I could possibly think of uh, to try to do this without you know, without upsetting anyone. So yeah, I left this weird message and I can't remember, this is where it gets a little hazy. I can't remember if I left a second message or if I sent an email or what, but somehow within like a week or so, I got an email back saying like, Hey, can you send us an MP3 of you doing his voice? And I was like, Oh my God, they responded. And it like blew my mind. And like, I couldn't sleep. I was just imagining like, Oh my God, I have a chance at this. Um, however small it may be, cause I just assumed like, well, obviously they're going to get Michael J. Fox. Cause I remember them saying like, oh, we got Christopher Lloyd. And I was like, okay, there's no way they're not going to get Michael J. Fox. And, um, but what wound up happening was a couple months go by and I was like, all right, I sent it off. Like I got a rock band mic and recorded my audition and sent, sent it off and, uh, didn't hear anything back. And, uh, I went on like a Disney cruise and it was like the most miserable time of my life. I was like, <laughs> I hit like rock bottom i was like 23 on the disney cruise with like my mom and my two siblings and i was just like god everything is awful (laughs) uh which is such a silly thing like i love disney i go to disney all the time but like it was just a weird period of my life where i was like everything is is not uh you know i'd just gone to film home for like a year going now what do i do with myself 
And um, for some reason on that, like, I don't remember if it was on the cruise or immediately afterwards, my mom was like, you should go to L.A. And I was like, really? And she was like, yeah, why not? You don't have a girlfriend. You don't have anything going for you here in New Jersey. Just go. And I was like, all right. So me and my friend, like, drove across the country and it was nuts. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I went in and moved to, moved in with an old college friend. And when I got there, literally like a couple days after I got there, I got a call saying, uh, hey, you know, like this is Julian. He's the sound guy at Telltale. He's the booth director. And uh, he's like, just want to like, I don't want to freak you out, but you're like our top dude for this Back to the Future game. But just want to give you a heads up. But, uh, y- you know, we, it's you and another dude maybe but uh yeah just wanted to tell you and it was like this really weird call where i was like oh my god really and so i spent like the next week and a half or so just like waiting by the phone like oh my god am i gonna am i gonna find out and they had me go through another ring of auditions where like read these lines and all that kind of stuff in between uh afterwards they're like all right you got it and uh we're gonna fly you up here and have you you know take a crack at it so that was actually probably the longest version of that story i've told (laughs) Just because I was like, well, they, they, you guys have heard this before. I'll tell the like the less abridged version. Yeah, <laughs> it's fantastic though. It really it is, is. So amazing though. I mean, <laughs> it's really wild. Yeah. So you land the job. You go in for your first day, and do they? These are these are in five episodes. So do you do one at a time? Do you sit in there and record all five episodes together? Do you? I mean, how does the time frame for this game work? Because they're released over you know, months of time in episodes. Uh, well, I mean, it was, yeah, we recorded it eat by each episode. So it was like, you know, I recorded the first episode and then it would be like a month or maybe even longer than that. And then I'd come in and record the second one. And, uh, you know, and it just kind of progressed throughout the year. It was almost, it was roughly about a year of like coming in, doing pickups and like, so I was in and out for like a year doing that and then doing some promotional stuff. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a long process. So it was really like a year of my life was just like back to the future, which was great. But, um, it was, it, yeah, it was, it was an intense, uh, on off recording. <laughs> that, that sounds like the best year of anyone's life ever. <laughs> hey, it might be. Who knows? I might have peaked at like twenty three. No, um, but you got no. to be Marty McFly. Come on now. I know that's a pretty. Yeah, I know that's pretty. <laughs> odd. I, it's funny. Like literally the other day, uh, I was laying in bed like two days ago, like right before I was about to go to sleep, and I was like, "Man, I got to voice Marty McFly." Like that still doesn't seem right. Like it seems because I feel like most people our whole life are are all our lives are sort of used to things like that not happening or not necessarily failure, but just sort of like the disappointment of reality. Like you'll never be Indiana Jones or you'll never be, you know, but the actually getting to do one of those weird things is like, whoa, like that happened. That's real. That exists. That can happen to someone from New Jersey that doesn't have anything going for him. You know, like it's still, it still doesn't quite settle in. Like my brain hasn't found a compartment for it yet. Definitely, and I, I like what you said too about the fact that you 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 have that that thought in your mind. It's like, well, you know, they're going to get Michael J. Fox, so why even think about it? You know, it's good to have that person there to push you a little bit. Like, no, dude, this is good. You got to give that a try because you know, obviously, what happened happened. But have you gotten to the point yet where you're sick of being asked to do Marty McFly for people? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, okay, it well. Doesn't... Go ahead. It doesn't come up that often. It, it really doesn't. I mean, nobody, it's not like I'm walking around LA and people are like, hey, Marty McFly guy. Like, if I go to a Back <laughs> to the Future like convention or something, like, it'll happen. But I don't get, I'm, I'm extremely grateful and extremely thankful. Like, if I'm anything else, I'm an asshole. You know what I mean? Like, if I feel <laughs> any other way about this situation, I'm an ungrateful jerk. So, AJ, uh, the question that I think a lot of people have when they play these video games, since there's uh, different things that can be said at different points, how does that work? Do you have to record the same lines over and over in different tones? Are you, are you recording a lot of, is it like a spreadsheet of just words you're recording? <laughs> um, no, uh, it's, well, it's basically, it's just a list. I mean, it's every possible conceivable version of the game you could think of. It's just, like, all right, what if he doesn't choose that? What if he's disappointed? What if he's, you know, like, it's every every version or iteration mm-hmm. of it uh, that you can think of. I can't even imagine for, like, Walking Dead, for uh, for those guys, especially um, 
like Melissa Hutchinson or uh, Dave Finoy, like the kind of stuff they have to do where it's like, okay, now either they got shot or they didn't get shot because there's this huge range of like emotions you have to do. Whereas Marty's just like, ah, it doesn't fit in there. You know, like there's <laughs> kind of a, they're usually pretty simple. Uh, but yeah, it, it was basically just a big, not a spreadsheet of words, but just a spreadsheet of lines. Like, okay, now go back up to the top and we have to do the scene again, except this time your name's Michael Corleone or, you know. Right. Now, when, you, uh, when you're when you doing this, do they have some kind of uh, mock-up of the game that you can see or are there screen, you know, uh, uh, storyboards or anything that you're looking at to know what's <laughs> what's going on? No, <laughs> no, uh, not at all. Uh, yeah, I, well, that's part of the fun of doing voiceover in general is sometimes if you're lucky, you'll go in and they'll be like, okay, hey, like here's a, you know, an animatic or they'll show you like maybe even a, a drawing of your character, but I don't. It's so rare that it's like here, either match this to picture or here's the the environment you're in. Um, not that they don't even have it. Just usually, I don't think that people think about it. Uh, but with Back to the Future, yeah, it was usually just descriptions of like, okay, now you're hanging from the clock tower. Sometimes even the the scripts, there'd be scenes in the middle of other scenes, so we'd jump around where it was like, okay, now you're hanging from the building, or now you're being shot at by someone, or you know. So it is very. Uh, it's just people dictating what's going on to you. All right, so let's let's do some fun role play. Have you ever had to do a little role play for people before? Uh, what kind of role play? Well, let's <laughs> let's pretend like let's yeah. let's pretend like uh, you are the sexy maid. No, I'm just kidding. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Let's pretend like uh, Marty McFly got into the DeLorean, hit 88, and just randomly happened to be in a different place instead of in the place he was back in time. But he lands on um, the Black Pearl with Jack Sparrow, and they're having a conversation over breakfast about uh, how they're going to get him back. What 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 do you what do you do with that? I mean, can you talk back and forth? Among Amongst yourself, you're not um, going to make the man work. Oh, you're not paying absolutely! Him. I'm paying him fifteen <laughs> cents an hour. Fifteen cents. Now, what is? But no, this is a good. This is a good way to ask, though. How, what is the weirdest request you have gotten from somebody to do your voices? Like, if you go out someplace and somebody does recognize who you are, do they say, "Oh, you can do that"? Why don't you um, do this version of this and and whatever else? I mean, what's the strangest thing somebody's asked of you to do just on a whim, like I did? Um, that one wasn't the strangest. It was, I mean, I, I could potentially do that. It would be a lot of like, what do you want to eat for breakfast? It would be, uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, you got any eggs? I've got really bad eggs. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a terrible job. I have to warm up my voice before I do Jack because he's in a deeper register. So it's like anytime I'd go to a gig or a, 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 a Jack Sparrow thing, like back in college, I'd just be in my car going, like making all sorts of weird noises. But um, weirdest thing was someone had, <laughs> I, I can't say who or where it was, but someone had me do a love letter to their wife, I believe it was, as Tommy Lee Jones giving orders in uh, The Fugitive. <laughs> So like you're talking like the check every outhouse that 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 thing. Yeah, or, yeah, wow. yeah. It was it was. I mean, I don't I I don't even know how I did it. Like it sounded. I remember thinking like, okay, hopefully that'll do it. And like I might have had to deepen. I don't remember what exactly happened, but I was like, all right, I did it. And he was very happy, and apparently she was very happy with it. But that was definitely the weirdest one. Like, hey, like because I, I sometimes I'll put up a thing on like some random forums like around Christmas or something. I'll be like, hey, if anyone wants a voicemail or whatever, like hit me up. Uh, you know, from Marty McFly or uh, I, I do you and McGregor and uh, all kinds of random people. But, um, yeah, someone was like, hey, can you do this? So that's how that happened. And it was just me like, I love you. I love you. It was so weird. It was very <laughs> weird. I can't do it now. But, um, yeah, it was just the strangest, like, shouting. And, like, the first time I did it was, like, too slow. And he was like, no, no, no. I want you a really order. I was like, all right, sure. So that was that was the bizarrest. Uh, the strangest. <laughs> That's just, I couldn't imagine. I mean, some people just, they're not afraid to ask for anything, so they just do, which I apparently I'm one of those people, so I apologize in advance for that. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> but uh, what I was, you you aspire and have been a filmmaker. You went to school to make film. What is, if you could make a movie, what would be your ideal type of movie, genre of movie? What What kind of film would you like to make? Oh. Um, I mean, 
same kind of films I grew up with, uh, the Goonies, Back to the Future, Indiana Jones type stuff. But that's, uh, yeah, that's hopefully what I aspire to do one day. I mean, film is a tough thing to do unless you're one of those people that's out there every day going like, I'm a filmmaker, I'm going to make films. I'm like, all right, listen, I'm going to write them first and then we'll see where it goes. But um, yeah, fantasy, uh, sort of that how to, how, intelligent family movie where I'd like to go like movies that don't you know try to talk down to you like I feel like a lot of movies that come out now are either like too bombastic or too like there's not a lot of adult humor for people to enjoy even within a kid's movie like Goonies anyone can watch or any adult can watch it's like this is hilarious like these kids are you know they're talking like kids would they're not acting right uh you know uh, so that is to me what I would love to do or what I'm trying to do but uh it takes a lot of work (laughs) <laughs> do, do you do Corey feldman uh i do not but i've never I've been asked to do Corey feldman that's a funny way because he kind of has a yeah. like i'm trying to think of donatello uh oh yeah oh, what, he's he's got such a weird god what is heck i wish I, I now i need to work on that that's a funny one <laughs> <laughs> no i just saw him a couple weekends ago and he he really he, he comes as advertised aj let's put it that way <laughs> <laughs> his lady wears an angel costume at all times i didn't know that you know so here i thought he just had like a victoria's secret model walking around with him everywhere it turns out no that's his girlfriend she's not allowed to speak and she wears an angel costume complete with the halo and wings really that's a thing that's a thing i kid you not i don't understand where it came from why it came from she accompanied him the entire day for his signings panels everything he did she just sat there Silent That's as she amazing. could be with a little grin on her face. And, you know, it was the strangest thing ever. How did I get on this tangent? No one will ever know. I don't I don't mind. I, was, I didn't know that. Look, I've learned something new today. And now I'm going to tell everyone I see, like, did you know Corey Feldman is constantly being tailed by an angel? Um, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and he really likes Michael Jackson, but I think everybody already knew that one. But uh, are, yeah. you, you're a, are you a video game man at all like yourself? Do you Do you like to play games? Um, well, that's a, that, you know, it's funny. That's a tough question. I get asked a lot too, because I love the video games. I love, I really love it. Same thing with movies. Like the movies I love, I really love. Like I love, uh, dark souls, demon souls, dark souls, dark souls Two, uh, resident evil four, super Mario world. Uh, I like the uncharted series. Didn't care for the third one, but I love number two. Uh, yeah, the, the Batman games. Uh, but I'm very choosy. Like I sort of sit like and wait from a distance and then i see something i want to go yes that okay Uh, have you ever played the back to the future game on the nintendo entertainment system i've watched the angry video game nerd play it but i have not personally played i played the third one which is a a disaster (laughs) it is so disappointing because you look at that and think it's the game i want to play and then you play it and you're like no it's not yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the third one, you're just try- you're on a horse trying to jump over things. That's as far as I've ever gotten on that game. Whereas the Telltale game, I actually played all the way through to the end. You can, I mean, that's the good thing about this game is you can beat it if you just give the time to do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, totally. The third, oh, but the Sega game, I remember finding that in oh like a, an EB Games or something like, uh, you know, like 10 years ago. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know this existed. And uh, it was, yeah, it's impossible. It's impossible to beat. You cannot beat that game. Uh, I, though I did find a code to skip to the next level, so I did. And that next level is just as impossible. Right. And then there's, like, another level where you're on a train. Uh, it's, every, there's only four levels in the entire game, and each one's impossible to beat. So it's, it's pretty, like, that's a nightmare. It really is. I never could figure out in the first game why you're avoiding oil slicks and girls with hula hoops. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and guys with big sheets of glass you know, just going back, left to right. <laughs> well, they're installing windows, guy. That happened all the time in Back to the Future. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> but uh, believe it or not, this is leading somewhere. Are you a Minecraft fan? Because I've watched some episodes of Seedlings, and I, I think it's pretty <laughs> fun. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess we should tell people what that is, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, or you want me to tell them? If, I could do yeah, that. Go, right, go right for yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Do the work for me. Um, <laughs> It's uh, slam. So, yeah. so seedlings is a um, was that a Tommy Lee Jones impression that the slim? It sounded like you said slim. I uh, no, uh, no, it wasn't. I apologize. Because it sounded like a Men in Black when he's like, "All right, but no cute nicknames." It's like whatever you say, slim. Or anyway, <laughs> that's what my mind went to. Anyway, Not intentionally, um, but sure. 
So Seedlings is uh, it's a Minecraft machinima, but it's it's crafted in a way that wouldn't really it, it, to me at least. I've seen a lot of uh, machinimas. For people who don't know what that is, it's when someone takes a video game and uses the tools inside the game to create a show. And most of the time, what that means is someone on their headset screaming while someone else runs around, or just like a two-hour movie of someone like you know. Uh, picking hay or so I don't I, like they're usually very very bad or or uninteresting for someone who doesn't know the game but seedlings is basically a show that takes place sort of within the world of minecraft like it's a minecraft it's a show made with moon minecraft but the story that it's telling is kind of like this big epic overarching journey kind of like um like if uh, uh what can I like avatar the last airbender like that sort of like mythical quest to go find something or sort of like Lord of the Rings, but you know, through Minecraft. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a, it's an, a higher production value, or I guess it's a, it's a more thought out adult version of that. Like what if, uh, you know, my, my friends who are filmmakers and who have made, you know, like, uh, do you know, Hey Ash, what you play in? I don't know that one. No. Okay. It's a, well, it's a, it's a popular internet show. Uh, they do, uh, they have a, their own web series. Like he's one of the creators uh, as well as my friends John and Ian. And basically they're filmmakers who are like, well, crap, it costs a lot of money to make a film or make a TV show. Like, let's try using this tool that's already available to us to create an adventure. So that's kind of what it is. But it's it's definitely, it's it's strange because, I mean, it, you know, you watch it initially and it looks just like you're watching somebody play Minecraft, but then it's like, oh, hey, these these characters are voiced over and they're talking about pretty typical mundane things. I watched one where uh, the very beginning of the, the episode and suddenly the house catches fire, which if you play Minecraft, you can catch stuff on fire completely accidentally all the time and watch what you've <laughs> spent hours building just burn to the ground, which made me chuckle because I like Minecraft. Do you play the game at all? Uh, I do not. One of my best friend back home did quite a bit and I would watch him, but it was mostly just, I was in awe. I was like, you can make anything, but it's kind of like knowing that if you, start heroin that'll become a problem like that's kind of i saw it and went i can't this is going to eat up way too much of my time if i get into this <laughs> you've spent three and a half hours and i literally have done this before making the uh the set of mr rogers neighborhood wow yeah <laughs> see i'm glad i don't have that experience i'm glad you did it for me yeah and i didn't publish it and then i lost the file so well, that's well, that makes it really sad then. <laughs> Saddest yeah. story that's extra ever. tragic. That's right. Yeah, it was, wasn't a beautiful day in that neighborhood. <laughs> it, it no longer exists. So, AJ, uh, you mentioned conventions. Uh, what what Back to the Future conventions have you done, and what what was that experience like? Uh, well, the the biggest one was the uh, the We're Going Back the uh, the twenty fifth anniversary convention. Uh, that happened the same year uh, that Back to the Future ca- or the game came out. Uh, that was the biggest and the craziest. Like we got to do a, um, they did a complete recreation of the Enchantment Under the Sea dance uh, on the night that Marty goes back, which is what October fourth. Is that it? I think it's the twenty sixth. Yeah, My, you're right. I October twenty sixth, and then November fifth. Damn it! At ten o four, maybe that's why. So he goes back at ten o. Anyway, see, I'm I'm now my my fandom is now completely completely <laughs> discredited. Uh, but yeah, we did that, and like it was a dream of mine as a kid to. I always used to say as a kid, like one day I want to get up on a stage and I want to play Johnny Be Good like Marty McFly did, like that. Like I would always say that. Like when people would be like, "What's your dream or what's your wish?" I'd be like, "That if I could do that once in my life, I've done it." And for, I said that to the right person at the right time while we were filming like a behind the scenes thing for Spike about the video game. And I was like, man, it's always been my dream. Like I heard they're doing an Enchantment of the Sea dance thing. And I was just kind of like venting to this guy, Joe. I was like, ah, oh, it'd be so cool. And he was like, you know, I run the uh, I'm running the convention or running the, the thing. And I was like, what? And uh, so he was like, would you like to do that? And I was like, uh, sure. But I haven't picked up a guitar in like three years And he was like, well, you better start learning. And he was like, yeah, we were going to have someone go up there and just mime it. Uh, He was like, but what would be better than having, you know, I guess you doing that? He said something to that effect. I would never say that about myself. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Like, you know, have you go up there and basically play uh, Johnny B. Good. So I got to do that. Did you sing? It's crazy. I did. I sang and I played the whole thing. And then I even attempted to wail on the guitar, but it wound up just being really weird. Uh, 
But it was, uh, yeah, it was very strange. Did you get to say the line afterwards when you were finished? Yes. <laughs> that like, was the big thing. Because it was all, it was, yeah, it was. It's got to happen it, here. Can it happen here? Come on, guy, don't make fun of me for making him do this. This is so cool. <laughs> the, the line, you want me to say, I was like, what happened to the convention? Um, oh, God, now I'm blanking on the line. I couldn't think of Dave Fenoy's name before, and now I can't. Uh, but your kids are going to love it. What's the second one? Uh, or the, for the beginning of the line? Oh, well, Hold on, wait. Uh, you, all right, take one. Slate, go. <laughs> You guys might not be ready for that, but uh, your kids are going to love it. Damn. Something like that. Damn, that's guys cool. Bravo, bravo. I'm, just, I, I'm sorry. I know I, I'm a jerk, but God, that's good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it always means a lot to me hearing Back to the Future fans say that because that is always my fear is that someone's going to be like, it just takes one person to bring down, you know, my house of cards, my small ego, uh, <laughs> you know, to be like, that really sucked. And I'll be like, I do suck. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I will tell you, when I played the game, I kept waiting for you not to sound like him. I kept thinking, you know, I, that's all I was listening for, you know. <laughs> and I, and the whole time, I was like, wow, that's not, yeah, that's not. And then, then you just forget about it. I mean, it is so, it's so incredibly dead on. I concur. It's, it, it's like the you. guy that played the, the 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 girl that twirls the baton in the marching band. You're waiting for her to drop it, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and you never dropped it. It's thank you. It's a weird. So this is a weird. I don't know whether this is ego or what it is, but like, I, I mean, I guess it's not. When I was playing the game, you know, you're sitting there for a long time. You know, like after a while, you sort of let your guard down because when it starts up, I, I, all that's going on my head is my oh, it's me, it's me, it's me in a Back to the Future game. Oh my god, whoa! You know, and I'm freaking out. And then after a couple hours and after a couple episodes, I start to forget that it's me. And I have I had these weird sort of like out of body experience like weird moments where I was just like <laughs> that guy sounds a lot like him. That's really he's it's good. <laughs> and then I'd be like, oh weird. I can't tell that to anyone because that's me. And like I mean now I've just told you, but there were these weird moments where I'd like chuckle at something or be like, ha, huh, that guy's that that was pretty good. Like he did a good like yeah. And uh, it, it was very bizarre. It's hard to keep in your head the whole time you're playing something that's you that. That's me. That's me. That's me. So I had my own weird experience of like, damn, that does sound like him. Well, but- here, here's the here's what I was going to say before. What I find so interesting is when you it, so you sung Johnny Be Good on stage. Michael J. Fox didn't in the movie. Yeah. They had another guy do it. And even as a kid, it's just like all of a sudden he starts singing. I was like, well, who is this guy singing now? <laughs> um, yeah. So this is like this was the first time people got to hear Marty McFly sing that song. You know, yeah, I, I mean, because it you 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 sounded like him. I'm assuming, or did you try to match Mark Campbell's version of Marty McFly that he did when Michael J. Fox lip synced? I just sort of did whatever I could. Like, I'm not a singer, mm-hmm. or I used to be when I was a kid. I, you know, I did like musicals and stuff. But since puberty, I haven't exactly tended to my voice. So I just kind of did the best I could, sounding as much like the movie version that I could. Like, I wasn't like way down and losing it. Like, I wasn't trying to do like <laughs> See, the Jerry Lewis. I, yeah, that's Michael what J. I was... Fox thing. That would have been a nightmare. So I just did what I <laughs> recalled from the movie. Well, I even <laughs> remember, like, as a kid being like, how's he going to front a rock band? Like, even, even as a kid, the whole time you're watching the movie, you're like, I can't imagine he's got much of a singing voice. I don't know yeah. that the pinheads are ever going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I never thought about it. Like the whole time, I never realized like because when you see him in the band in the beginning of the in the movie, he's just kind of playing. He's not singing or anything. Right. But uh, yeah, I never thought about him actually singing in his own band. That's pretty funny. Yeah, they never got past the instrumental part of the Power of Love at the beginning of the movie, so you never know. Sure. I mean, maybe it, maybe he's just not in the right genre of music. That could be it. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Michael thinking. J. Fox did sing in that. What was that movie that he did with like Light uh, of Day? Joan Jett or yep. something? Yeah. yeah, it was called The Light of Day. Yeah, yeah, he sings in that. Yeah, and, he, and he's not. And he wasn't bad, but he he wasn't doing. He, I mean, I think for Marty McFly, I mean, and you would know better than I would on this, AJ. Uh, the voice that he's doing is not exactly his his voice that he uses in everything else. There's somewhat of a, a you know, I think I think he was older trying to do a voice that was somewhat younger. Yeah, there's definitely a heightened – there's a heightened cartooniness about his voice and that specifically that he's kind of doing – I mean, he does have – his voice cracks a lot and he is constantly like, ah! You know, there is that, like, tension of uh, – like, the high-stakes tension that's sort of always in his voice and kind of – you know, I, I – I, like, I remember even as a kid thinking, like, he's very 
he's just very animated. Like everything he does is way over the top, but not in a way that's unrealistic. It's just very stylized. So yeah, there's definitely a, a different sound to him in that. Yeah, I always liked as a kid watching it that, you know, he seemed like he was such a friendly character. And I think the voice is a huge part of it because I think had he been as cool as he was supposed to be vocally, I mean, I think that, you know, he would have been, I mean, it would have been you're watching, you know, uh, Scott Bayo or something. There was just something so, you know, charming about the, the whole persona with the voice. Oh, totally. It's the it's the squeaky mouseness of mm-hmm. him and the fact that he's small, too, which is what yeah. drew me to him, I think, as a kid. And then the fact that he was a cool character yeah. was like, look, he's a small guy who's also cool. But he's not, you know, he's not like James Dean or, well, right. like James, James Dean wasn't as cool pe- as people say he was. But he wasn't just like unrelentingly cool. Like Johnny Depp, anything he does, it's like, come on, man, just be a person <laughs> for a second. You know, like. Like he's always a person, and he's yet somehow he still manages to to remain cool. Now, AJ, have you um, have you been asked to do any other Michael J. Fox? I know uh, you mentioned Stuart Little. Um, is there anything <laughs> else, any other properties, you know, that they've thought about, uh, you know, that they've needed needed his voice for that they've contacted you about? Uh, no, not Michael J. Fox. Uh, not that I. Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> But uh, there was not as many cartoon voices that he's uh, like when I, I remember looking into it because people were like, oh, what are you going to do now? Family ties the game. And I was like, <laughs> that was I, great. Somebody yeah. could telltale on that right now. That's yeah. so good. And uh, yeah, like Teen Wolf, like I look, when you look through his, his IMDb, it's like, OK, he did Atlantis. That didn't do so well. Stuart Little, they've done that to death. And uh, like I can't like Homeward Bound. You know, like all this, like, uh, like, sure, like, I would love to. That would be a lot of fun, but I don't think a lot of those franchises are uh, casualties still of kicking. War game with him and Sean Penn. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just think for a second, though, going back to if uh, somebody more serious and maybe even you know bigger in stature and whatever had been in this movie, though, do you think some of these things? I know, guy, we've always teased around about, like you said, the kind of the creepiness of the story and you know the characters in it or whatever. But if Marty was more of a James Dean style cool character, I right. think those scenes would have played more creepy than having kind of a playful, unassuming, uh, cool kid, but yeah. in kind of a I don't even I guess geek is the wrong word for it. But you know what I'm trying to say? If he had been any other kind of characterization of it, it may have played a little bit darker on accident, I think. Yeah. Yeah. There's always a sense that Marty's like three steps behind everyone. Uh, (laughs) Like, I think that's what's so much fun about him and Doc is Doc's always just like, oh, and just like and Marty's like, what the hell are you talking about the whole time? (laughs) And so I think there's always that sort of underlying like. Doc forces him into a situation or he has to force himself into a situation, but he really would rather not. Yeah. Like that whole scene with him and his mom, obviously he doesn't want to be there. And so you just you could feel it with every little like, you know, twitch. He's he's just doesn't he does not want to be there. And like not too many people, I think, can pull that off. Uh, you know, like he, he, there is a very special quality about him. And that's what makes the movies like it's the same thing as uh What's his name? Magnum P.I. had played Indiana Jones. It wouldn't have, right. it just would have been weird. It wouldn't Tom have been Selleck, the same. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, Robert England as Luke Skywalker. Wow. Could have you I've have never even heard that, that that could have been a thing? I yeah. Could have, could very well have been a thing. Uh, you know, who knows? That's Carol O'Connor as the skipper on Gilligan's Island. <laughs> That's the one I always hear. Uh, AJ, I'm, I'm curious your take on all of the films. Uh, you said you liked the first film. What do you think about the, the second and third one? What order would you rank them? And what are some of your favorite moments in the original Back to the Future films? Uh, uh, I rank them in order, I think, of the actual order they came out yeah. in. One, uh, two, three, sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the first one to me is perfect. It's self-contained. It's, it's, it, it is a perfect movie. Anyone who says otherwise is wrong. It's, right. it's a perfect <laughs> film, like, throughout. Uh, the second movie gets a bit dicey yeah. in the beginning. Like, I always think when it starts off, it's a little weird. Like, something doesn't feel right. And, like, even Doc and Marty's banter is kind of like something's – like, it takes a while for them to warm up. Yeah. But once it gets into the – and it, it's funny because obviously they probably didn't shoot it exactly in sequence. There's just something about that beginning part that feels a little faulty. And then somewhere about halfway through it picks up again and it's like, this is brilliant, this is brilliant, this is br-. – you know, like, it just becomes brilliant again. Uh, 
But uh, and then the third one, I love the third one. The third one's just another excuse to hang out with Doc and Marty. It doesn't need to be as brilliant as the other ones. Just like, look, here's Doc and Marty in the Wild West. Why the hell not? And like, I love it for that. I don't need it to be anything, you know, more than that. Uh, But favorite favorite moments. um, I mean, the whole Earth Angel thing the whole playing yeah. johnny be good and then earth angel like i i have chills just thinking about it like that yeah. is the most perfect i was actually analyzing this uh not too long ago in my head while i was listening to that song um it was just the the instrumental part of earth angel that popped up on uh my shuffle on my phone and i was like that's literally like the most amazing moment or one of the most amazing moments in like movie history because marty managed to do something so insane like he taught rock and roll to a group of people from like you know the, from the yeah. 50s he he managed to get his mom and dad together thereby creating himself and saved his entire existence in that one moment in that one kiss you have this amazing song of this amazing thing like everything that happens he literally made his own existence happen within that tiny tiny yes. moment and it's crazy and then george you know like pushing the guy and that guy le- like all that stuff that happens mm-hmm. leading into him playing johnny be good is is still to me probably one of my favorite moments uh ever i mean i have guilty pleasure moments in other movies but that moment specifically is like that's perfect they you can't get better than that did you ever get to experience the ride Yes, I did many times. It's still like the thought of it gives me uh, makes me sick to my stomach. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I love the ride. There was nothing yeah. wrong with the ride, but the ride physically made me the ill because the ride. entire time, it even just... when you're not doing anything, you're swaying and moving. And uh, yeah, I'm very sensitive to like motion rides or just rides in general. So for me, it was like I'd go on it because it was Back to the Future. But I had no. I totally yeah. agree because, you know, the, they made it the Simpsons ride now. And I like the Simpsons, but not on the same level that, that I like Back to the Future. And I was like, wow, this ride really isn't that much fun. You, you just it thrashes you from side to side. You know, the yeah. whole time it's you're uncomfortable. And then when you get off, you're like, whoo. It's like I think the thing I liked about it was that you were, you know, you were looking at uh, dinosaurs with 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 Biff and and uh, Doc Brown. Yeah, it's the whole feeling of like I actually uh, right before I got the Back to the Future thing, I was in a Walmart and I saw that. Uh, unfortunately for my day, I was in a Walmart and um, <laughs> and I saw I that they had a uh, <laughs> I ha- they had the the Back to the Future DVD that they released with the full ride yes. uh, video, and I went like it blew my mind. I was like, I have to. I already own this like twice, but I have to own it again. And just sitting there watching all that stuff, I'm like, this is kind of why that ride was so much fun is the whole buildup being like, all right, I'm slowly being introduced to the Back to the Future world again, but in like from a different angle and in sort of like a weird, less high budget way. Like right. there was kind of like a cheesiness about it that just yeah. sort of, you know, it was it's a fun. dinosaur it's, puppet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they really like that ride was fun and it was universal and everything. So obviously it meant it was a big thing, but it doesn't feel quite as classy as the movies, there is a sense of like cheesy, <laughs> like uh, who, you know, like the Chiodo brothers, the guys that do like, like uh, oh, what is it? The the clowns from space oh, or the clowns, yeah, clowns oh, from space, yeah. like that, yes. that kind of stuff. Like it definitely had that sort of vibe where it was like made for TV. But anyway, I, I love that about it because it is cheesy. What you need though is you need somebody to come by and shake your chair while you watch it so you can really yeah. <laughs> get the full experience. It's not quite the same. And then walking in the line and seeing the hoverboards on the wall and stuff oh, was so my cool. God. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it was it was very cool. I could I understand why they got rid of it or why they replaced it. I wish they would have you know, it's I wish they would have updated it. That would have been very cool, mm-hmm. but they should make a back lot park for Universal Studios. For that very reason, for the I, I know moving a ride like Jaws is stupid and ridiculous and probably impossible. But take that okay, and Back to the Future yeah. and a lot of these rides that have have gotten the boot at this park. It's like this generation would still eat that up in droves if you just <laughs> made it happen no. somewhere else. Please, I want my yeah. Jaws. I I remember loving Back to the Future and Jaws as the fir- the top two that I liked, and the Back to the Future ride because of every reason you guys just said. But the Jaws ride, I always wanted to be a performer on that ride because. I love that they were taking you on a boat tour and then they got to react to the shark and shoot the gun and you <laughs> time right. it with the explosions and all that fun stuff. And I remember leaving that park thinking that one day I'm going to be one of those tour guides on one of those boats and I'm going to love every minute of my life. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, AJ, this has been amazing. Where can people go to find you on the internet? What are you on? Are you on Twitter, Facebook, anything like that? Uh, yeah, I've just recently attempted to start using uh, Twitter, which is hard for me or was hard for me. Um, but uh, yeah, just at AJ Locasio uh, on Twitter. And then on Facebook, I have a fan page, which I'm always slightly embarrassed about. But uh, I didn't make it, but I did take it over. <laughs> it's um, awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's <laughs> that's what I always say. It's like, I didn't make it, but I took it over when I realized I sort of had to. Uh, but yeah, on Facebook, if you just search, what is it like? It's just follow AJ, like facebook.com slash follow AJ, because I guess AJ Locasio was taken by me. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Twitter, Facebook, and that's that's about it. That's enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> you have a nice website, too, though. I was scouring that earlier. Oh, yeah, the website. I always forget it exists. It's, uh, yeah, it was my attempt to be like, all right, I got to put all my stuff in one place. Uh, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> Well, so thanks, if people a- want to check out, yeah, you can check out my website if you want to, but there's no reason to. Uh, but go ahead. You were going to close out. Yeah. No, Andrew, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, wrap it up uh, and final thoughts if you have any. No, it's just been uh, a real treat, been a real pleasure, AJ, for having you on the show and, uh, you know, just to be able to hear kind of the process and, and the, the process you've been through personally and the process of how the video game worked and a lot of the things that you've done since then. So I can't thank you enough for joining us on this show this evening. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. It's uh, it's always nice to feel wanted. Um, <laughs> no, it's such a weird thing doing when you do voiceover. So much of what you do is nobody, either people will never hear of it or never you'll never get any sort of recognition for it. So it's uh, it's always nice to have people appreciate something you know that I've done. Uh, it feels very cool. I I am I'm very humbled by it. Thank you. Well, here's looking to more from AJ Locasio. Thanks for joining us this evening. And Guy, it's always a pleasure having you on my show and me being on your show simultaneously. Thank you. All right. <laughs> for Idle Chatter Podcast and the Flux Capacicast, we will talk to you sometime in the future.